Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life Mr. Segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. <gasps> The juiciest scoop that I have to tell you right now is that I'm coming to a lot of cities and you might want to come. I know you do. You're going to go to heathermcdonald.net to get the tickets. My next show is West Palm Beach, April 5th and 6th, two shows a night. Then I'll be in Phoenix on May 3rd, Denver, May 17th and 18th, San Diego, Temecula, June 1st. And San Diego in Humphreys, July 27th. That's Humphreys by the Bay. Was there last year. You loved it. Go to heathermcdonald.net. Also, at heathermcdonald.net, you can get my latest merch. So many things to choose from. And, of course, join my Patreon, which is the best Patreon on earth. Everybody loves it, and you will too. Be part of the fun. New eps every Friday. All right, let's get into it. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. We are going to get into so many juicy topics because I have Evan Real here, senior editor of Page Six, always on the red carpet, always getting the scoop um, for me because I do a lot of Page Six articles. Also, you have your own podcast. Uh, Yes, virtual reality that I co-host with uh, Danny Murphy. And you've been on our podcast before and we had the absolute best time. Danny couldn't be here, um, but, but you guys will come back when he's in town. And so let's... Just get into it. Okay. The sad news about Kate Middleton. Mm. So I we all talked about where is she? The theory started. People were concerned. There were, you know, is it, you know, is she so upset because there was infidelity with William? Is there something else? Was she getting plastic surgery? Is she with Shelly Miscovich? Is she on The Masked <laughs> Singer? Like everybody was yeah. saying everything. And I mean, I, in, in my covering of it, I always said, I think it's that she had a surgery happen and it either is taking longer to recover and maybe she's milking it out for her own mental health and just deserving it. Or maybe it got, there was a complication. Mm -hmm. And apparently that's what she is basically saying is she had a planned operation and then they discovered there's cancer and now she's getting chemo. Correct? Yes. Yeah. And I love that Megan King of all people was on the case and her psychic, she hired a psychic to figure out what was going on. And her psychic said, this is what happened that there was some sort of like, Exactly what you're yeah. saying, like a surgery. Well, then am I com- the psychic too? Because I, you, I said it. Wait, without, I saw it without the psychic. Are, are I you? know a lot of people said it. Though a lot of people yeah. thought that. A lot of people thought there might be a colostomy bag, mm. which then would be something that you wouldn't want to be walking out and about. Right. So here's my question. Yes. Now you know, no one wants to say anything. I mean, we all want the best for her. I definitely believe this is her talking. I don't think this is AI or anything. But the girl at the farmers market. Are we not going to talk about that? That still wasn't her. And yeah, like it. That she. That was not her. I. I yeah, I don't believe. I don't even that know if it was her. him. I think it could have been two people that like are a like a lookalike couple. Yeah, or something. like a lookalike couple that are hired that were hired to do this. Right, and I don't know why the pals had. I feel like they made it weirder than it needed to be. Like also placing the blame on Kate for photoshopping. Like I'm so sorry, but Kate was not recovering from her abdominal surgery slash cancer diagnosis by practicing on Adobe Photoshop. Like, yes, she was no. not doing that. So why put that blame on her? I thought it was so weird. And yes, I, I don't think that couple was Kate and or William. Yeah. And I, yeah, I think that they just made it weirder than it had to be. And then it ultimately forced poor Kate to sit here on a bench in her striped sweater and tell us all she had cancer when like maybe this wasn't the, like the, I feel like the palace only stoked speculation. Right. Like it, yeah. it forced us into like a mental tailspin because she is such a public facing person and she's I mean, always out and about and shaking hands and kissing babies. And it's like, I feel like they just should have addressed this earlier. When you watch this disaster, are you like, should I apply to be the PR person <laughs> for, the, for the royal family because anyone could do a better job? Literally, literally yeah. that. Yes, exactly. I Where is the LinkedIn link? I also saw a photo that at one time she wore the sweater before. Oh, so and, then are but, there weird theories around no. that? She because, rewears because you stuff. Could, but yes, she rewears. Yeah. But you could also tell that, like, her hair is different or longer. Mm. I don't know, you know, what the deal is with her hair. This episode of Juicy Scoop is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking.yeah. 
Booking.com offers so many possibilities across the U.S. for all the travelers you want to be. From relaxing beach resorts to remote mountain cabins, the multitude of choices across the U.S. on Booking.com allow you to book whoever you want to be. So whether I'm traveling alone or going on a family vacation or a girl's trip, I want to stay at the best place with the greatest price. And that's why I love using Booking.com. So this spring, check out Booking.com for your ideal hotel or vacation home, no matter where you go in the U.S. Book whoever you want to be on Booking.com, Booking. Yeah. I mean, it is a really sad time when you think about, okay, now where does this leave Harry? Now his sister-in-law is going through a lot. And and then, of course, his dad has cancer. Right. And then um, this was kind of weird. So Kate Middleton's uncle went on some show like a week or two ago and was just like ripping on um, Meghan Markle and calling her like the laughing girl and the laughing girl. And and it's just so weird also when like some guy out of nowhere like gets like she must be like, why? Why is my uncle talking about my? sister-in-law that we have and we're estranged and then he apologized once he found out that his you know niece was sick he was like oh maybe i shouldn't have like gone on that podcast or whatever. i know i feel like megan markle his name is gary just, goldsmith is is her kate middleton's uncle yeah it's just so odd i feel like poor megan and kate just have like a host of weird troll like family members just like hiding beneath a bridge waiting to say something but yeah it just does not make the situation any better whatsoever yeah so there we go I think a lot of people you know felt like an asshole for their reporting on it I'm glad that I only just reported on the theories and my theory was correct but I did report on the theories because I thought some of them were funny like the BBL and the mess yes the 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 BBL got me (laughs) Okay, so Rebel Wilson, to remind people, Rebel Wilson is pitch perfect. She was the hilarious girl in Bridesmaids, the blonde girl. She's from Australia. She's now married um, to her wife. They have a daughter, and she's coming out with her memoir, and she said, there's an asshole. I'm going to tell who the asshole is. And then she did another post, and she's like, the asshole is Sasha Sasha Baron Cohen, and I'm not going to be silenced by PR people and lawyers, which makes us think in hinting that there's an asshole coming in her book that's coming out soon. Did his people reach out to her people somehow and be like, you better watch it or what? Yeah. And now, Sasha, I think he's come out to like very strongly deny this. Yes. And I don't know what's what, but I'm interested to like read about it in the memoir. So I if mean, this it's, was a, a... it's a great way to get people to want to read it, you know, yeah. but like I, I do think the thing about these memoirs now, and I've said this before that it are kind of a bummer is they come out on a Tuesday and by like Wednesday, we know the whole, we yeah. know everything from like, you know, people doing their own reporting and book reports to so you better have more in it that you really love the way someone tells a story or something because it can't just be – and what what it says is that she, I guess, said in some other interview while they were doing this movie, The Grimsley's Gentleman – I've never even heard of the movie. Yeah, same. But um, that he was like, oh, I think it would be really funny if I bent over and you stuck your finger in my like bare asshole. Yeah, so, and then she was like, "No, no," and she never did it. So she meant like, like literal asshole. Like I, that is that is that is weird. <laughs> I wouldn't even like chalk that up to like just being a massive asshole. That's like almost like in twenty twenty four terms. Like that's yeah. kind of like sexual harassment. It was like I guess it was like, <laughs> like five years ago. But then he his response is, you know, there are there's videos, there's interviews, there's everything to prove that this isn't it. Like mm. I wasn't like that. Other people are like, I could see that happening. I feel like everybody is just at this point, they have to have a, a tell a story about someone, whether you're a waitress mm-hmm. doing a TikTok right. or was in an elevator <laughs> with someone or you went on a bad date with a guy that mm-hmm. maybe never called you back. So, you know, he was a, a narcissistic, you know, ghosted you, was grooming you and you were 30 and he was 30. Like there's... 
everyone feels like some of these stories, I have to say, could be a bit of a stretch. Mm. You know, like there's one thing to really tell about like a real situation. But hey, you know, books, a lot of people don't buy books. So she's got to sell some books. That, <laughs> and if he was a real dick and rude, sure, tell it. It's her story to tell. Yeah, very true. But that is such a good point you make about these books coming out. Tuesday, yeah. you know everything by Wednesday. I feel like, and I'm someone who like, str- like I, I'm so bad. I only watch reality TV and I only read celebrity memoirs. Like that's like just how I am as a person. But I have, well, I am too, basically. Yeah, I have been picking up less and less celebrity memoirs because I do feel like I know every chapter from all the headlines. So we need to, and it's kind of a bummer because like I did read the whole Paris Hilton one and oh, I thought it was really good. So I liked good. it. Read it on plane. I read the whole Britney one. Yep. I liked it. And I still heard all the stuff. Mm-hmm. But someone just summarizing something of like, oh, Justin uh, Timberlake, did this happen? Mm-hmm. It's very different than when I read it. Right, I was like, right. wait a minute. I interpreted that sh- that story as him actually being there for her. Mm. When you read Britney's When version. I read the Britney uh-huh. version, I did not think he came off horribly. It was like they were two teenagers the, the, there was a pregnancy that was unexpected and not planned. And then some people were like, and then he sat there and he's like, would you like me to play my guitar? And, you know, someone could, if you just see it like that, it's like, oh my God, he's making about him and he's such a dick and she's, you know, yeah. in pain physically and, and emotionally. And I was like, no, I think he was like, I'm going to be here with you. And like, I don't know, would this be distract? Maybe this will help distract you. That's how I saw it when I read it. Right, like 20-year-old Justin was like doing the best he could with what yeah. he had at the time. I can see that. And I also yeah. feel like the headlines for around Britney's memoir were so much more, they were harsher than the grace she actually extended to the people who like wronged her. Because right. I feel like, like for Justin, like even though she said what she said about Justin like she clearly did love him and that really came through in the writing and then even like same for Jamie Lynn Spears and we know that she does not F with Jamie Lynn Spears but then towards the end of the book she's like that's my sister maybe I should like think about it differently and be nicer and like maybe one day we'll be friends again like so I don't know I feel like Britney's like kinder than the headlines we saw what do you think's going on with Britney now because I feel like like anything people are caring less and less like well, okay here's another outfit here's another brown sensible pump here's <laughs> another spin around here's another naked photo and i think with the book and everything we thought maybe there would be something else to come mm-hmm. like creative creatively like either music or some other type of you know content and it's not and i just think like she's not i always check her numbers because mm-hmm. it's like but she's just at She's always, maybe she's lost a little bit Mm because people are just like, I don't want to see it anymore. But it's still like at the 40 million. Like it doesn't, it it hasn't, she didn't lose 10 million. She didn't Mm -hmm. gain 10 million. It's just kind of like there. Right. I think with Britney and like, I am a massive Britney fan. Like she is like my heart, soul and spirit. I think, I think she's like still, obviously still healing. I feel like she went through 13 years of abuse and like, this is just like her process. Like she's going to be spinning in her living room for years to come because that's like she doesn't trust doctors so she's not going to go to therapy i feel like she feels so burned by the music industry that she doesn't want to make anything else there was that whole report about like how her team was assembling like writers and producers for another album uh and then like after that came out she went on instagram and was like i am not returning to music so it seems like there's still even like inner mm. struggles in the camp that she does have around her because like they're like Brittany, you should like really like work on the music and she's like fuck that so i I don't know, as a Britney fan, it makes me so sad because it did kind of feel like the book was this like crescendo and that we were going to get like at least a single or something after that. And then we didn't. But I kind of like can't blame her for like just not wanting to work because she worked so hard for so many years. And what did she get out of it to kids who don't talk to her who live in Hawaii? And like the reason I feel I truly feel like the the reason the saddest part, because like she put up with all the bullshit literally for the kids and for what now they don't talk to her and they live miles and miles away i just i feel so but also i also can understand how hard it must be for her to kids. be her son yeah i yeah so like i i see you know mm-hmm. the, both sides of it but also yeah i when i watched <laughs> i watched bet on blonde which oh, i really liked love. with erica and i told her that yes and i was like watching this thing and i'm like yeah, I'm sorry there's no way Britney can ever do this again, Mm. in my opinion, unless she really went into therapy and, Mm. like, 
for like a couple of years and really wanted it. And even then, yeah, maybe just she may never want to have that kind of pressure of performing. And in, unless she does put on a show that's better than her last show. Mm-hmm. Why it'll right. she'll be ripped apart? Yep. And he, you know, so I I don't know that we'll ever see it. Yeah, yeah, totally. And I think she's happy. Yeah, I, going on the Instagram and getting that, seeing that. Oh, that video got this many views and this many likes. She's taken off the comments. For her, that might just be just enough performing for her that makes her feel like I'm I'm having a creative outlet. I got to put on this outfit. Mm-hmm. I got to dance to my favorite song. Yep. I got you know whatever 400,000 views and 30,000 likes and that makes me feel good and now I can go to the next day yeah yeah yeah. wait speaking of Erica yeah I, I saw you at the direct tv Oscars party a oh, few yes, weeks back yeah. and you were in the booth with Erica I was at the bar getting a drink I don't know what you guys were chatting about but right when you left I had to like swoop in and talk to her yeah we Erica and I had beef like we had like secret beef that why? I that Tell I suspect. Tell me why did you have secret beef? I just like need an outlet to talk to someone about this. Because... Well, this is the outlet. This is juicy scoop. <laughs> yeah. What is the outlet? So basically, I mean, what's the story? Not the I, outlet. Yeah. I love Erica Jane. Like yeah. I was a I love pop music, and so I knew about Erica Jane before Housewives. Like I was into the music, and when I was like a little baby gay in New York City going to college, she performed at this gay nightclub called Splash. She was opening for Kim Zolciak. I've been to Splash, by the way. Oh, uh, love. So, you know, you get the vibe. So she was yeah. literally opening for Kim Zolciak. It oh, was like wow. the Don't Be Tardy era. I was like, not 21, but I, w- like, I was going to figure out a way to go to the show. So I found a fake ID. I made it to the show. And I ended up telling her that story when I got to interview her for her big press day for Better It All and Blonde. I was like okay. so excited. In my Erica Jane merch, like, I'm like, I'm like a real fan. And so we had this like wonderful conversation and I think that she really liked connecting and like knowing about my fandom, et cetera. And then we did a live show for virtual reality a few months later in September. The residency was already in play and Sutton was doing our live show. And a fan in the audience asked Sutton for her thoughts about the $7 tickets, allegedly. And Sutton made a joke about like, are they seven dollars? I think they were one dollar. Does any every does the whole room want to go to the residency? I think I can cover it. And everyone had a good little giggle about it. And then at BravoCon, Erica like she made it a point to skip me and Danny on the carpet. And I was like, Do you know what? I bet you she's upset about the Sutton thing. Um, and so I just kind of like sat with that for a little bit. So then when I saw her at direct TV, I was like, okay, I'm just going to like, see if this is what the deal was. And like immediately told her how much I loved the bed at all on blonde docuseries. And then I was like, and by the way, I'm really sorry about something. And she was like, and that's why I skipped you at BravoCon. That's why I skipped you at the direct TV party today. And basically what she told me is that she was disappointed that me being such a fan, I allowed space for Sutton to diss the show and like the show was so important to her when she was like down so bad and she was like you know Sutton's at a different station in life where she can like joke about my show and doesn't think twice about it but for me like this was kind of like my victory lap and like after you know several very bad years like I was so excited about this etc whatever um but anyways I confirmed my suspicions that she was upset with me and anyways she was like well I I I think it's great that you cleared it up yeah but and I also see when you're hosting a show like that it's uh, someone asked the question. You didn't facilitate a question. You didn't pre-plan a snarky comeback. Right. But also you, you know, now did she see a video of it or did she hear it? it on the, there, the... there was a video that kind of went viral. So again, it. you can't control the video. Right. So like if someone posted that video, you know, there's been, there was a time where I um, had my editor at the time, not this one I have now. And they cut what they thought was like a good salacious clip of a, an interview I did. And I found it really hurt the person mm-hmm. that was being discussed. Even though I wasn't saying it, the guest was saying it. Right. And I removed it and it made me feel a little more conscious of um, what I choose for the clips. Mm. Because people will see the clips. People can send the clips. Is everyone going to listen to the full hour and 20 minutes? No. Right. But like, so I do think that is something that we all learn from in being in this business. Right. And also in, you know, with the situation of Sutton and Erica, yeah, Sutton never has to sell another t-shirt sweater at her Sutton store. She is financially <laughs> set for the rest of her life and so are her kids, grandkids, great-grandkids. Okay, Erica 
doesn't own a home, mm. left a 20 year marriage with nothing, had to, you know, maneuver this whole situation with her husband. Now, finally, people are sort of seeing about it. Right. You know, and why everyone was coming after her to and myself, too. I was asking, did she know I would I would have people on my show that was like she was all walking around the office all the time. Then someone would be like, no, she wasn't. Mm. She doesn't. I'm like, yeah, she was. She didn't go to law school. How would she know how the right. money spent when he basically was like, here, baby, here's a credit card and hire your fabulous gay entourage and go make some fun songs and go to Splash Nightclub. Like, <laughs> Sounds that's good to kind me. of what she was doing. <laughs> yeah. And so I feel like now I have a better perspective of it, too. And I yeah. reported on her a lot, too. And when I saw her on a plane, I was a little bit like, oh, fuck. This was like a couple, maybe a year or so to, so to go. And I go, hi, Erica. I think we were coming to BravoCon or something. Okay. And she was so nice about how I'm doing after I fainted mm. on stage. Mm. She was like, how are you? Da, 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 da. Oh. And I remember being like, that's really nice. And then when I saw, I thought she had a great season. I thought she showed herself as a real friend who's been through some shit when she yeah. spoke to Kyle. I thought that was a great scene. Um, I think she is a great friend to Kyle. And yeah. like, and I really saw like the work that she did in putting this show together. And it was a legit, fabulous show. And when all these other housewives and people are trying to go on stage and do things and they're like, you know, it's comedy or it's singing and it's kind of neither. I do feel like Erica puts on a good show. Yes. I think Luann puts on a good mm -hmm. show. And they, because they've been doing it for like, you know, many years. They didn't right. just suddenly do something. So I think that's where she's coming to. Like, yeah, you're going to shit on the fact that there's some rumor going around about ticket sales, mm -hmm. which is doesn't help me with my business. Right. And sometimes those things are not true. Like, I've sold out a show and, and then... um it's totally sold out. And either people don't come because people are flakes. Right. And then some snark fan will be like, it wasn't sold out. Mm. Here's two empty seats. It was fucking sold out. Right. Or someone buys the tickets and then they're trying to sell it that day. And they're like, mm. oh, the tickets are on sale for whatever, $10. It's right. not true. Like, and what does it matter if you sold it out or not? Just like, we're all fucking working. It just was a rude thing to say. To yeah, yeah. So I think that Erica, knowing how big of a fan I was of her music, felt like maybe in that moment I could have, like, stepped in to support her and defend her. You could have. You could, I could have. You could have said, I I've actually seen her perform when I was a baby gay. Right. I can't wait to go. You're right. You right. could have done that. And I just think it's a good lesson to learn because we, we report on these people – and they're real people, yes. and they're trying to. They're doing this show, and they're selling their soul to the devil. Right, devil being Bravo, <laughs> Nanny Cohen. No, but to hopefully get something with longevity. Right. Not all of them, but some of them. Erica being one of, them, hoping to have something with longevity that will take them, you know, afterwards if this show ever ends. And it's like, why shit on it? Right, right. So again, Erica, I'm sorry. We love you. I'm sorry. Okay, I love so you. This episode of Juicy Scoop is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Booking.com offers so many possibilities across the U.S. for all the travelers you want to be. From relaxing beach resorts to remote mountain cabins, the multitude of choices across the U.S. on Booking.com allow you to book whoever you want to be. I'm definitely a different version of me depending on whether I'm traveling and who I'm with. So whether I'm traveling alone to do a bunch of shows or if I'm with my son looking at a college or going on a family vacation or a girl's trip. I want to stay at the best place with the greatest price. And that's why I love using Booking.com because there's such a variety of places to choose from that fits each trip perfectly. So this spring, check out Booking.com for your ideal hotel or vacation home, no matter where you go in the U.S. Book whoever you want to be on Booking.com. Booking dot, yeah. You guys give me so many compliments on my hair, but I have to tell you, it can be really time consuming. And there's a lot more things I'd rather do than try to style my hair so it's not frizzy. I'd like to watch all the old episodes of Housewives and just snuggle in my bed. But sometimes I'm like, Heather, get out of bed. You got to do your hair. Well, 
Now, let me introduce to you Way's new anti-frizz cream. It is a lightweight cream that provides immediate frizz control that lasts up to 72 hours. It's not only a time-saving addition to my routine, it prevents heat damage because I also do use a curling iron and a hair dryer and all of that can be protected by using the anti-frizz cream. Also, I love that it helps reduce and repair split ends, which I really get. Frizz free up your schedule with Way. Go to theway.com, that's T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com and enter promo code JUICY for 15% off any product. That's theway, T-H-E-O-U-A-I.com, promo code JUICY. Speaking of shitting on people. <laughs> so I saw you at this direct TV party. John Jansen, former boyfriend of Real House of OC, Shannon Storms Bedore. Yes. Is there now with... Former housewife returning friend Alexis Bellino. When she was on the show, she was married to, to her husband, uh, Jim Bellino, and now she's divorced and dating John Jansen. So we see them go coming on the carpet. And I'm like, oh my God. And that was their first carpet uh, experience. Yes. Together, their, their debut. They spoke to you. Yes. Tell me about the conversation that happened bef- because that was before this lawsuit came out. We're going to get to the lawsuit in a minute, but I will just say the lawsuit is Jim. I'll just get to it now. John, John Jansen is suing Shannon Bedore for $75,000. The lawsuit says that he gave her $40,000 through a wire for a facelift in January of 2022. And then another uh, $35,000 personal check. In May of 2023. No, I think it was 2023. I, yes. Yeah, it was like it was a two installment situation. Yeah, yeah, I think both were in 2023. Okay. And, or maybe 22. Anyway, I read it, but I can't remember. So that, um, you know, and, she, you know, she's saying it's a gift. His attorney is saying, we have texts and emails that prove that it's not a gift. Then I read more and she was saying like, we were trying to resolve this, but in me paying him back, I wanted him to sign something. I think that he wouldn't be able to discuss it. And he said, no, Yeah, this is how I'm understanding it. Right. So, no. and I'm not, a, you know, I did not read the actual legal things. I'm reading these articles. Right. And I thought that was extremely interesting because now he's on the show. He told me at that party after he was off the carpet, we were just talking um, because we hung out with them as a couple, my husband and I, And that he's like, I'm not, I, you know, we tried to stay away from each other, Alexis and I, but this is, this chemistry is off the hook and we're in love and it has nothing to do with Shannon. I wish her the best. It has nothing to do with Shannon. And I, and Alexis said, I said, if you're having me back on the show to feature John, no, but he has been on once. She's like, I've done one scene with him so far, which was Mm. like a FaceTime. Okay. But I'm thinking... There must be a lot of discussion about Shannon in which has either been filmed or they want to film. And that is why he is not going to agree with the no talking thing. And I also think he could be like, no, fuck you. You talked about me all the time. Mm. You talked about me all the time. You made me look bad. Yeah. Either to your friends off camera that then would say it on camera. Uh, We don't have sex. I don't spend the night. I don't have a lot of money. Remember, she was like, he's not going to be rich enough to take care of us forever or uh his kids live at home i don't get along with the kids or, or emily saying that he told shannon that she was fat and not attracted to her like there which again is a, char- is a character assassination on his part yeah yeah because any man that would say that to a woman we hate uh, and yes. i think he woke up one day with too many comments mm. from angry women who watch bravo and he was like fuck you like i stuck around in this relationship longer than i wanted because you you know, he said to me that um, that part of her last contract was was um, based on if he stuck around and filmed with her. Wow. Now, I don't know if that was ever in writing. I don't know if she conveyed that to him in a, in a desperate. I don't know. That's just what I recall him telling me. I don't know how true that is. But it makes me think that in all of this, like he's just like, no. I, I I was actually really good to her. Yeah. And I'm, you know, and yeah, I want my 75 grand back, but I also 
One, don't one want of, that story that's going to be in repeats forever about me. I want people to – I want to have an opportunity to set the record straight that I wasn't a bad boyfriend to her. Right. And, like, now clearly, from what I know, this is making its way into the season. Cameras were not on Shannon as the story broke, but they were on other people. So I know that – So they're, like, having lunch and yeah, they're like, oh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh so this my is gosh. definitely – you know, it was definitely captured. I don't know if it'll make the final cut. I, I'm assuming that it will because this is like so juicy. Like you owe me seventy five thousand dollars for a facelift. The thing that makes me the, so sad yeah. is like Shannon's been on this platform for so many years, and I know that not every housewife is doing great financially. That's exactly what I said. But like this the is, fact that you have to borrow money for a facelift makes me so. It makes me so sad. Well, I'm like I definitely think here's the thing. Before she got on the show. She was married yeah, and lived in somewhere between a 13 and a $16 million house. Yep. And once she got on the show, there was infidelity. They broke up. They got back together. They did a fake uh, funeral. <laughs> yes. They did a vow renewal. <laughs> yeah. They get divorced. They sell the house. No, they, no, they stay together. They sell the house. They then rent a house. Then they get divorced. She's been renting ever since. Mm-hmm. And been on the show for what eight nine years? Yeah. And I don't, you know, maybe that's, yeah. I don't think she did great in this divorce. And I think that how you know in doing this, the maybe the the lemon business or whatever it was didn't pan out. I don't know. Like, yeah. or she was just like, I don't want to spend it. Let's see if I can get it from my boyfriend. Could, I don't know. Women do that. Women and people do that in couples. Like, why not? Or right. be crying about it. If I only looked like this. And then he's like, <laughs> oh, my God, here. We don't know. Yeah. She's saying it's a true. gift. So her story could be, he came to with me to a consult, you know, consult with somebody. And I was like, I can't, I can't justify spending this money on myself. And he was like, I got you, girl. Mm. That could be her story. And yeah. she goes, and now- the hits keep coming. I get this. Like what? Right. You know, so who knows what their story is going to be. But, um, yeah, I think it will be interesting to see, you know, and we see that Alexis and Tamara and um, Heather Dubro were all in like some Besties, private jet yes. and all that. So, look, I mean, I'll I'll always watch OC. I'll yes. always watch OC Beverly Hills and the and well. I don't know how much I'll be watching New York this next round. Do you not like the reboot? I I don't know. It's fine. I, I mean, I like the girls. I just don't know that I I I don't know. I can't say that I a hundred percent will. But be, but Beverly Hills and OC and New Jersey, I'll always watch. Yeah, and hopefully New York will get get into it. Who's your top Roni reboot girl? Probably Erin, just because I interviewed her yeah, and I, I feel Aaron. like she's like gorgeous and interesting and. Yeah. But all of them are great. All of them are really put together, and I like yes. their style. So we'll just see what happens with them. But, yeah, this is going to be a lot. He is he is the the Harry Hamlin – not the Harry Hamlin, the Harry du- – uh, Yeah, Harry – Duber. Harry Duber, yes, yeah, Harry Duber. Yeah, the Harry Duber now of the, of the West Coast. Yes. So we'll see. And also you wonder how much of this lawsuit was the pressure from your new girlfriend. You know, how, how many times has someone gotten divorced – and the new wife is like, mm, we shouldn't still be paying for that. And no, 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 no. And, you know, like, that's what? True. You need to get that. What is she doing still borrowing that? You know, like, that's right. what happens. Or you are you are the second wife or the, the girlfriend after. And you're like, why are you running over there to help your ex-wife with her gate? Right. Like, you've been divorced eight years. Like, right. what what? Was it at all instigated by her to be like, go after this? I mean, John and Alexis told me and Danny up and down on the carpet at DirecTV, like, we don't want to hurt Shannon. We care how she feels in all of this. Like, we really just, this is about us. It's not about her. And we just, yeah, they they didn't want to hurt her. But this, I feel like this is going to hurt Shannon. (laughs) I feel like anything he could say about her, though, and I know she must be stressed about it, wouldn't surprise the viewers. We know her personality. We know she's dramatic. We know she's like... We have normal conversations and they are devastating. Well, how is a normal conversation <laughs> devastating? Like, we all know it. Yeah. So it's like, I don't think there's anything that he could say that would be like shocking, like, oh, that she, whatever, was dramatic or made it about herself. I think mm-hmm. we know that. Right. But still, I think the anticipation, the anxiety that someone must have when they know people are filming about this and they're not going to be able to see it for like six months. Yeah. That's 
that's tough. I can imagine. That's why you need, yeah, that's yeah. Why you need plastic surgery. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> um, this happened over the oh, weekend. Very sad. Christine yes. Quinn, who was the beautiful blonde from the Netflix show Selling Sunset. She was on the first two seasons. She was a realtor for many years prior to the show being made. Then she was, you know, super for fashion forward, married this guy. He appeared to be very, very wealthy. And then she went off the show. They had a baby. And it was announced that he was arrested. They the cops were there. Which I assume do they are they just listening to like the the cop news? Like the TMZ people? I think so. I'm not really sure. You like, wouldn't know, like, pay, you wouldn't know being a page six person how this works. I'm not, like, tapped into the cop side of it all. Um, but, yeah, this was, like, insane because they were, like, there, I think, like, three times within, so, like, 33 so, hours or something. Like, I don't know about the third time. I just said the first time was the cops were called. They said it wasn't her. It wasn't she who called. But she was okay. But she did go to the hospital with mm. her child because he threw a bag of, like, broken glass Yes. And it hit the child. And so then they left. He was arrested in a very unfortunate bathrobe. Yeah. And no shoes. And no shoes and just looked like a loser, which he is. And terrifying. And then he was let out on bail, but there was a, a temporary thing where he couldn't go back to the house. He did go back to the house. She wasn't there. So then he was arrested again. Mm. Yeah. I- and... um. But I think that, um, yeah, I've heard that they've been having problems for a while. Yeah. And so sometimes, as horrible as this is, it's out there now. If she w- if it wasn't out there, if this, if this had resulted in, in something being kept private, maybe she would stay longer. Mm-hmm. So hopefully she can look at it in a good way, get out. Right. She can, you know. She's got a lot going on. She has 5 million followers. She's, like I said, very fashion forward and all of that. But also she can go back on Selling Sunset. I'm sure they'd love to have her back, 100%. I, as a viewer and fan, would love yeah. to have her back. I'm I'm so heartbroken for her. And this really just goes to show that like nothing is ever good as it seems. I don't know. It's just like making me think of Taylor Armstrong and her now deceased husband. From Real Housewives of yeah. Beverly Hills. Yeah, we didn't know that. And yeah. Then we knew. And it was yeah. just like so sad and so heartbreaking. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm like but you also, said, but also the stuff that we saw on Selling Sunset, which was you know filmed probably three years ago when mm-hmm. she was on, it was before her wedding, before they had a kid, and things change when people get married and have kids. So right. he could have been a complete delight, who yeah. then for whatever reason, you know, became an abuser, like right. a verbal and everything else. I'm assume, but. Um, this is not good. Well, we'll see what his defense is. You know, allegedly this is what happened. Allegedly, allegedly. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we wish her the best. Um, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, they were in uh, Palm Palm Desert this weekend, yeah. La Quinta, which, where I was. And I got word that they were there and filming. And there's this new girl who's like, whose name is... Bronwyn, but spelled differently than the Bronwyn of Not OC. another Bronwyn. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And she uh, supposedly, and she's like a pretty influencer from, you know. Is she like so, a Mormon influencer? I, I don't know anything. I just oh saw God. little bits and pieces about it. I'm dying for them to get a And saw them at the Mormon airport and. Um, Did you say hi? No, no, no. Oh. I saw a photo of them at oh, the airport. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't go to the airport. I drove. I don't yeah. fly. To <laughs> but, um, you know, Monica's gone. And I have to say that, that kind of. I don't know. Like I like I don't know what she could have done differently, but I feel like that's that interest has died. I felt it was so big and mm. now everyone's just kinda like, I don't know. Like we're moving on. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I don't know. I agree. I agree. I Did feel like Did you ever interview Monica? I never interviewed Monica. No, I have not. I mean, I would be interested to chat with well, I I mean I would be I would I would interview her, of course, always, but I think I would have been more interested to interview her like a few months that's ago. That's what like, I'm saying. Like, yeah. yes, I feel like interest is waning a little bit and i think they'll figure i feel like out. she was like waiting like she didn't do i mean i had reached out to to her mm. well first i didn't reach out to her first i was so disgusted with what she did yeah first i reached out to her when i just thought she was a new housewife yeah 
I was also reaching out to her when she was Dita Von Teese or whatever, Reality oh, Von Teese, not knowing that she was reaching out to me. And I just thought she was, you know, whatever. And and I only commented about her exposing Jen Shaw. I uh, never saw that um, that Instagram account talk about anything other than Jen Shaw. Mm. And I think that was her argument. I see. Yeah. Like I only, I, yeah, I did this, but it was only Jen Shaw, and they were like, "No, it was awful stuff about us too." Right. And then she was like, "Yeah, but you were engaging with me about Jen Shaw, but yeah, but you also said awful stuff about us, and you weren't being honest." And I agree. Like the dishonesty and the whole that whole thing of being a blogger, it's like very today, but it's also like, oh, it's too much of inauthentic. And that's not what the housewives should be. Right. Like too weird. But I don't know. We'll see if she gets on like Traitors or House of Villains or something. I would think she could at least get on House of Villains. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. She's got to do House of Villains or and or Traitors. I'd love to see her on both. I think those are two special places that she would exist very well in and thrive. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. I watched a ton of. Buying Beverly Hills. I think I'm like on to, Netflix. Yeah, on Netflix. It's it's really good. I think I'm like up to episode four or five now. Well, okay. Here are my thoughts. Yeah, tell me. Um, I love watching shows where I know the people. So obviously, I'm going to watch this. I was a realtor. I grew up in real estate. Oh. I like real estate shows. Okay. Especially about LA. Yeah. So I do love the backdrop. They also go to Miami, which is just I love real estate porn. I yes. like can love that. And I do, they, so it's that glossiness that like the Selling Sunset has. Yeah. And then, um, but like, I don't know. I mean, let's just be honest here. I don't know how honest you can be. Okay. (laughs) I feel like they are basically stealing a storyline from like season one and two of Kardashians from 15 years ago with the three girls. Um... Do you remember? There's a scene where they're in Miami and... Um, Alexia, I think that's her name. She feels that the older sister, Farah, and the younger sister, um, which is Sophia, even though they have a bigger age gap, they have such a close bond and they leave her out. And I'm like, it's very Chloe, Courtney. Clo- Chloe yeah. and Courtney take <laughs> Miami. Like, where's Ke- like, it just felt, I kind of don't believe it. I think that they are very, they don't have any issues. I think they actually really get along. Mm -hmm. And I think they're like, we got to have some stuff happening. Yeah. And then they fake go for this guy who uh, I'm like, do we even know what he likes? Like I was like, and they're both two girls are acting like they're both flirting with him. And I just felt like he was playing along. Wait, Farah and Sophia, like the oldest and youngest? No, Sophia, Sophia. And this other realtor oh. are both flirting with this really good luck- looking guy named Adam. Okay, okay. That like looks like a model, okay. but you know has clients that want to spend thirty million dollars, uh, whatever. And so I'm like, I'm watching these shows, and you know, there's this new thing that happened with the National Association of Realtors, where the, now they can't state how much commission they're offering a buyer's agent in the MLS. Mm. And it's kind of people think it's going to be a big deal. They think it's going to really hurt like new agents because mostly new agents represent buyers, not the listings, not the seller's house. They normally just represent buyers because it's like harder work and schlepping. And and I'm like, I think it was all these shows that made people go, who are these fucking twats making (laughs) – 500,000 after they show one house. Like, what the fuck is this? Maybe this is the problem with housing in America. I don't know. Yeah, that I, makes sense. So, because I, I, I every time I look forward to see to seeing the potential commission because it's like yeah, so yeah. mind blowing. It's like literally like life changing commissions. It's crazy. And so, it's a lot of that. And then, um, but of course, about Mauricio and Kyle. So, there's, there's so far, I'm like on episode seven or something. There's only been two or three scenes Kyle's featured in. She was not featured at all in the first season, which I believe was part of maybe her Beverly Hills contract. And did you notice that, I don't know if they- Of why she couldn't do it. Right, and I think in like the first lower third, when she comes on screen in this season, in season two, it says, uh, Mauricio's wife and star of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Uh So I think that was some sort of like weird Bravo 
contract stipulation thing. It's, I, I don't know. Oh, because it's like, I thought you were going to say it was going to just be like Mauricio's wife. Like as if we don't know, like oh. when they bring back like a housewife <laughs> right. that was already fired and was on five seasons and it's like Sutton's friend. You're yeah. like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This girl was on five years before Sutton. Um, I just thought it was odd that they included that. And I was really surprised that they were able to speak about Beverly Hills in such a candid way. Real house as Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like... Um, it's also just kind of interesting that I'm like, uh, to when, you know, when she's like, I have anxiety and all this other stuff and that she wants this for her girls. Mm, yeah. I guess it's like, what else are you going to do? I think it's that. You, you might as well be famous and make as much money as you can. You're, right. you know, we're already out there. Mm -hmm. But I really feel like we never saw these girls on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So if, if they didn't want it for themselves, and maybe they very much did, it's the kind of thing that, like, they could have led a private life. Mm -hmm. But I, I assume he wanted the show. He probably saw Selling Sunset and all this stuff and was like, well, we have a juicier, funnier yeah. life. We're more famous than that. And then the other thing was the Rick Hilton thing. So the I, Rick Hilton yes. thing. So Hilton and Highland, which is Rick Hilton, Paris's dad, Kathy Hilton's husband, gave Mauricio his first job. Yeah. I mean, when when Kyle and Mauricio met, they met at like a nightclub, and they were living in an apartment with Farah, like who was her from her first husband, and. He was like selling suits or he was a personal trainer or something. They yeah. both got their real estate license. She then, you know, became more of the mom. And so I don't know that she ever really did real estate. He got the job at Hilton and Highland with Rick Hilton and then did really well. And then he said at a certain point, he's like, I want to be a partner. And he's like, no, which honestly that being in real estate, that's a, that doesn't happen. Right. Like, like you, if you're a really good, per, you know, um, Agent, they just keep saying, okay, you know, you only have to pay us 1% of your career. Like, it just keeps going down and down and down because we want to keep you. Right. So, anyway, he goes and leaves and starts his own company. And Kathy Hilton said in the reunion, that was fine. But what we said was don't poach our people, our agents, our clients, our escrow people, whatever. And he did with some. So, cut to all these years later, the storyline is one of his main guys – is being pursued by Rick Hilton. And Rick Hilton is saying, come over to Hilton and Highland and I will give you a portion of the partnership. Something that I didn't give Mauricio all the time. And Mauricio, Are you buying it? Like, do you think it's, do you think that Rick is part, real? That could be real, but I think what Mauricio needs to say is go to his main guy and go, he's only doing this to hurt me. He doesn't mm. really care about you. Yeah. And do you want to be with a, a a dying not a dying but like an, a much older older vibe or do you want to grow with this thing where all the hip and young kids are and like we have a tv show and everything but just know he's only doing that to get to mm -hmm. to me yeah and that's that's what i would tell him but i think it's a good storyline maybe it's true maybe it's not maybe there's an element of it that's true maybe it's just a conversation and not an actual like offer on the table but yeah, I think it's all like the real estate stuff that to me is interesting. So yeah. I think that was good that they made it a storyline. And then, of course, he's like, you know, oh, I guess Kyle's just not in love with me anymore. And um, so he's like being really honest about it. And, you know, it's like we've seen it and we've gotten the bits and pieces from what they've given us. And to me, this is one of the most fascinating stories in real Housewives history because yeah. – it's so relatable as someone that's been married for a long time. Mm -hmm. I have friends who are divorced. Like I get how this can happen. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's he's out currently dating. Yeah, and I guess good for him because I, I I feel like you know Kyle's doing what she wants to do. Yeah, so. I mean, what you know, I I don't know. I heard some stuff over the weekend. So uh, regarding a certain country singer. Yeah. Yo, with both. Oh, oh, Mauricio. Mauricio oh. is, you know, enjoying his best life. And, and good and for him. And I, you know, dancing around with dan the dancers. <gasps> the oh, dancer. Oh, no. Holding hands again, maybe? Having dinner, whatever. Oh, no. Who knows? They were cute together. But she said, go ahead. So yeah. there's no scandal there. Right, right. So who knows? Maybe they're just friends. Maybe... You know, she's staying in another place. I don't know. But yeah. I think he's kind of like, I don't care anymore. I don't care. 
She's with her country singer. Now, when is the article coming out <laughs> on People Magazine? <sighs> I know. Yep, we're in love. Everyone's waiting the for it. The title is Yep, We're in Love. Yeah, yeah. I love I love Yep. <laughs> and it's going to be them looking great, like, facing the yes. light. Mm-hmm. And on the ground, guitar. Yep. Legs kind of entwined. Yes, yep. Then there's going to be another photo of like... <laughs> Uh huh. Yeah, we're gonna get like, a laughing la- photo. La- laughing, mm-hmm. and then definitely some animals. Yeah. Oh. Some for, animals, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, and then the, like an in it'll be like at like an office setting, and in the background are um Kyle's kids framed. <laughs> so it's like, you know, yes, this is my new life, but uh-huh. this is really my life. I mean, I would love to see it. I truly. If th- this comes out and I get this many predictions right, I maybe I, if I don't. Start getting up there with Tyler Henry. I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> yeah, you need a, we need a crystal ball here in the studio. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I I mean, she did like shut it down on her Amazon Live, which basically is like her her own version of a podcast. But I, what what is that? What is that? I've asked Lala. <laughs> what it what it is? Why are you dropping your biggest tea on the Amazon Live? Do you get paid the longer people stay on the Amazon Live? That I'm Aren't not, you supposed to be yeah. selling your products? Right. I, that I'm not sure about, but it I don't does get it, seem but like that's all the all the juiciest scoop comes from them yes. doing their Amazon Live. So I feel like Amazon must be paying an enormous amount. It, and yes. part of it is you gotta answer these questions. And then I think they just get comfortable and answer the questions. Right. Yeah, that must be it because you're so right. Like all these big headlines like break via Amazon. It's I'm I I'll, I'll click on an article like one that I didn't write or didn't have any part in and and I'm like, of course it's Amazon. Live. It's always Amazon Live. <laughs> but yeah, she shut that down in an Amazon Live. Recently? Like maybe like 2ish weeks ago when it became a thing on Demois. But I I don't know. I kind of feel like Kyle would shut it down just like shut people up and then once it eventually happens like she could be like look like I wanted to announce it myself say it in my own words etc cetera, etc cetera. I, thought, I thought everything that was on the reunion was now I went back to being like no they are a couple I've gone back and forth 15 times and I was like no they are a couple because he was like well would Morgan be here sitting and I don't know she might yeah like there's there's no way if someone said that to me like I'm sorry I'm not I, but yeah, would I date a woman? No, I wouldn't. Right, exactly. Yeah. I just I I know that about. But I guess I know people change their mind, and then also maybe you want to say yes because then other people will accuse you of like being homophobic. Yeah, or, like yeah. just because you're like, well, I'm sorry, I'm just like not that, you know, like, right. um, you know, like if someone said, would you date a woman? And you're like, no, no yeah. one's gonna say, <laughs> what are you kids, straights? What's wrong with you? Like, yeah, yeah. no, I mean, it's just like no. But I think. If there was a, a heavy rumor about me being with a, a friend of mine who was a lesbian and it really wasn't true, I would be like, it's not true. Like, I'm yeah. married and, like, whatever. Right. But I think she wasn't ready for it. I think she is smart about how much press this was going to bring to the Buying Beverly Hills show, mm. which – Let's be honest, it kind of was like a dud first season. It got like no buzz. I don't even remember the storylines from first season. No. I don't even remember. I had one guy come on and he was a delight, Brandon. But other than that, I really don't remember anything about the show. Right. Same. And I was like, so this got me watching. Yeah. And like Kyle is such a family gal that I feel like she would be willing to sort of like use this to benefit her family. Even totally. if it's like her estranged husband. Obviously, she'd want to benefit her daughters. Her daughters. Yeah. yeah. So. And get, and launch them in a way that they yeah. can have their own thing. So and like their own mom success. of the year for stoking it is sacri- tabloid fodder. You're, you're right. She <laughs> sacrificed her herself. Yeah. For the benefit of all the. But I mean, wh- then there was a rumor that oh she did talk to a divorce attorney soon this week or whatever. Yeah, I saw that. And then watching all this with all the how many offices there are in the world and stuff, I'm like, why are they living in Encino? Like there was like. <laughs> Granted, their house in Encino, I'm it's sure, a, is worth it's like. Beautiful. I'm sure it's worth a lot. I'm in Woodland Hills, the Valley, but I'm just sort of like, is this business, or is it just so so overwhelming that he just takes the salary and it's not mm. the kind of money that we think it is? I don't know, right? Because I guess he's just the CEO, so he's not the owner. It's like franchises. Mm. Oh, it's like McDonald's, I think. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I don't think he owns, or they just lease. The, the building, mm. you know, where the agents are and they just set their office there and then you, you know, 
I don't know. But like, I was like, wow. I mean, this is huge. Yeah. When you see that he's like, oh, I sold another house for $30 million and da 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 da. And um, so, well, whatever the case, I think they did raise great daughters. Yes. They're all winners. I'm obsessed they're all, with their they're daughters. They're all pretty and fun. They all sound like Kyle. They all, I, I always <laughs> think it's Kyle on screen. Like, yeah. it's, they, it's so crazy how they all sound like her. Yeah. I do love Sophia. Like, I thought she was a really good addition. I interviewed her. She's really pretty. She's the youngest. So 20, pretty. She's a 23 year old. And then, of course, there's Portia, who's 16, who right. is not featured at all in yeah. this. Um, just like one little tidbit at the beginning at the yeah, dinner table so, and then she's gone yeah yeah because maybe but kids change sometimes they don't want that's the thing like kids that at 12 that don't want to be on mm. it might feel differently at 23 right. I want to be on it same thing with why I think it's wrong when when parents expose their kids too much on social media mm. and then make them say well if you give up being on the YouTube channel we, you know, we're going to lose the house and it's like yeah, I like doing YouTube when I was six. I don't want to do it at 12. Right. I might want to do it at 23. Like, they're kids. Yeah. It changes. So they, I'm sure the three are there, and they're very happy to be there. Yeah. You know, so, but it's interesting. Yeah, I like the dynamic, even if they're copying Courtney, Kim, and Chloe sometimes. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it is. It, 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 it's even a little bit like that because... The Sophia is much taller, like yeah. Chloe. Yes. Yeah. yeah she's and the like Chloe of the group. And then the, the uh, is it Alexis or Ale Alexia? Alexia. Alexia, Alexia yeah. is more petite. Uh huh. And then is like the Courtney. And yes. then Kim is Farah. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. and, but in the styles and everything. So yeah. it's kind of funny. Yeah. And they're all brunette, of course. Oh, Amazon she, Live. she also said she, <laughs> that she doesn't believe that she was ever um, being manipulative with Dorit, Kyle. I mean, I. I love Kyle so much, but I really loved I'm a big Dorit fan. But in reading that text message that was like released in full online after it was, you know, revealed on the reunion, I did Who didn't, released it? I, that's what I don't that, know. So Dorit received a text from Kyle the night before the reunion. Yes. That was basically like, I know we haven't talked, but um, you know, I'm going through a lot. Like and basically Dorit felt it was be cool to me tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I'll be cool to you. Right. And I don't think that's such a bad thing to do. When you're going on national television, you're going through a divorce, you weren't as close. <clears throat> However, Kyle didn't do anything mean to Dorit all season. So she was like, I know we haven't talked, but can we? Just... Can you be cool tomorrow? And then Dorit was like, I think that's quite manipulative. And she said <laughs> that. Well, who is she telling the story to? Oh, um, Erica? Who yeah, I think it's to Erica. And then, yeah, but we... But where did the – was it on the show? I So it was – there was like – they showed it on screen and they kind of like highlighted certain chunks. But it wasn't shown okay. for very long. So I'm not sure how like the full text message made its way online. But it did. But I, I read it a few times because I was like looking for the manipulation and yeah. I never found it. Right. I just – yeah, I don't know what was what that was about. I don't know. But so – um, Hope they can patch – things up <laughs> well maybe she'll explain it in the people article yeah okay <laughs> <clears throat> sorry that it's well maybe you'll get the exclusive yeah um one of the guys that's on the mauricio show is the one who sold ariana and this is coming from face reality oh they, it's ben they, Black. Put, they put it together face reality 16 instagram account that um he sold this house to it was went for one six four nine or that was the listing price yeah and I think she got it for one six mm -hmm. and it looks modern and it's been redone it's in the Hollywood Hills it's not in the Valley and that's where um, Ariana Maddox bought her house yeah and a friend of mine told me that she was looking at it to flip their flippers oh. and they didn't go for it but from what she told me that the listing price was and the amount of work that went in it to it. Ariana got a great deal. Yeah, I mean Ariana got a great deal. Yes. So um and so now I assume Tom will get to keep that house and then she'll he'll just whatever, pay what's what is owed or cuz I think the whole reason she wasn't leaving is because she didn't have a place or maybe she didn't have her money together, now she does mm -hmm. to buy a place. Also we saw her bedroom. I don't think she's the most organized. <laughs> yeah. And I think moving is overwhelming. She's yes. in doing Chicago, uh -huh. all of it. So now she'll have her own place. They'll figure out their finances. He'll stay in the Valley. She's here. Yeah. Apparently the reunion was not good for the girls. 
Yeah, I know. I can't believe like, Lala, Lala and Ariana. But I will say like I... What, is, what is, you heard about that? Because so, I haven't even talked to Lala about this. So basically that Lala and Ariana really got into it and kind of left feeling like the friendship is done. It, it seems like a permanent friendship break, which is... I don't know. I I feel like the world is growing tired of the like Ariana Superwoman narrative. And I think that Lala... I appreciate her for just like really like leaning into her truth and what she feels is authentic to herself. And I, uh, I mean, like the whole like Sandoval and Ariana thing was like, just, I don't know. It, it was, it was insane, but I think we're all so tired of it. You know, I mean, are you tired of it? Like, do you, are you, um, I, well, I, I, I can see why people are, but at the same time, like, that's not Ariana's fault that she no, was given like a million deals. It's like totally and, not Ariana's fault. So I, I don't like that. Oh, enough or yeah, yeah, yeah. get over it. Because mm-hmm. she doesn't have to get over ever what happened to her. 100%. You know no, what I mean? Yes. And so, but yeah, if but they do have to film a show mm-hmm. and the other people do have to interact with this other cast member. And that's where it gets really hard. I think the if they were never on a show and the girls then continue to go have lunch with Tom Sandoval six months after he did this to her. Yeah. In real life, with no cameras, there was never a show. Then I could see her being like "fuck you" forever, mm. and they would, and they, and she would be justified. Yeah. But when there's business and Hollywood mm. and everything else involved, like it's Hollywood, and Hollywood people never turn down anything, right? And if they turn down every opportunity in talking to him, the producers wouldn't be happy, and all of that. And then as time goes on, he is a charming guy and if he's showing any remorse to them as a friend and being nice to them now they start getting sucked in and that's when ariana was like i'm afraid you guys are going to get sucked in and then i'm going to be on the one left out yeah which and i I think that might happen yeah i think i think that is happening i feel like at this point like the only person that ariana like really has like a true ride or die is katie um who also doesn't mess with a lot of people on that cast anyway so it kind of seems like they're just kind of becoming this like dynamic duo and everyone else is over here and the Um, sandwich shop isn't happening you hear about the sandwich shop yeah that's so i knew about the this tidbit of information and i somebody else like went and found the record so i have to give them credit but i don't know who they are okay that the girl that was the woman that was like helping them come up with the menu and helping them um hire people yeah she trademarked all about her oh so that so something about her belongs to oh something her. about her, yeah she tra- okay. so she owns it, so I don't know if that is what also added to them being maybe like pissed or like wait a minute we don't want to deal with this woman I don't mm. know of course the city of West Hollywood is very difficult they had to remove their all their stuff from the from the outdoor eating area then she goes and does Chicago like I don't know if you guys are ever gonna get a sandwich. Yeah, and I do you know what I kind of like I feel bad for like the fans who are so excited about this sandwich shop because there really wasn't like a, a genuine excitement. I mean, like they made hundreds of thousand dollars when they sold merch for whatever. There was a whole activation at BravoCon, but like I feel like Vanderpump rules and this is just like my thoughts, assumptions and speculations. I feel like it's like sort of like coming to a close. So why put yourself through like the drama of owning a brick and mortar sandwich shop if like it's not even like for storyline or you don't have that like flagship series to really like anchor it like I it's just I mean here's d- the thing being in business with a friend oh it's also hard too it's really really hard yeah. and then that kind of a business like an actual restaurant and I just think at the time I think the intentions were a hundred percent there yeah that where they wanted to do this they wanted to do it back when you know Katie and Tom were still married and everything right, before Scandal. before Scandal, yeah. they wanted to do it it could have been fun. It could have been cute. And then Scannable happens. And, and, you know, they have these other opportunities. They have these ways of making money so much easier than slicing meat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so I'm like, so whoever the fan is that bought the something about her sweatshirt, what are you going to, is somebody going to get together and like, <laughs> is Ron, Ronald Richards going to come and now do a class action lawsuit? Did you buy a something about her sweatshirt for $34 and the store never opened? Like, <laughs> yeah. let it go. Yeah, yeah. Let it go. It's still, maybe they'll do something somewhere else. Mm-hmm. I don't 
really think. Maybe like a food truck. I just don't. It's why would you do it <laughs> when you could go to a commercial or do an Instagram or yeah. do a podcast or do something else? Like I'm just saying, if you weren't raised, do like you know. Well, Katie said she was raised in a sandwich shop. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think that's what it is, and it, I don't think it was ever fake for the show, though. I think the, no. the, the, all this was the intention of this was what we want to do with our life and you're filming our life. And then these things really did happen with the city mm-hmm. of West Hollywood. Right. And then all and these other opportunities, exactly what I said. And now it's not worth it. Did you watch The Valley? I did. I liked it. What did you think? Yeah. Yeah, I was into it. I mean, I think already another couple is separated. Did you see that? <sighs> yes. Um, the, Michelle the, and... The realtors. Yeah. They're realtors who don't live in the valley. Right. Behind uh, the chateau. Yeah, yes. That's where they live. Yes. Yes. And um, Chateau Vermont. And they are already... They are separated. They yeah. announced on some carpet. And um, Jax comes in to Vanderpump and he's like, God. <laughs> he's like, Tom Sandoval, you look awful. You look, you're, you look like you're 50. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Uh, Jax to me is, you cannot take your eyes off of Jax. He is such an authentic reality star. Hate him, love him, think he's a dick. He is who he is. He is who he is, and it's good. And, uh, you know, and we'll see what's going on with Britney and him and everything. Yeah. But I, think but I will say, good. like, I think Jax is wrong, though, because Tom Sandoval, in my opinion, has, like, Never looks better. Whatever Never looks he's, better. whatever he's doing, like injection wise, working out. Like I, f- I think not drinking. I that that yeah. is helping here, and then also getting rid of the mustache. Like he yeah. really does look good. I also wonder. I don't know if, if he's done anything to his nose, but his I'm I got no. a liquid nose job, and I'm looking at everyone's nose now, oh, and so okay. I feel like possibly. Yeah, it looks good. I'm like gonna show. Tom yeah, Sandoval you can to my... do that, and you like if you ever had like a little bump or something, you could just get like a filler in there and it'll yeah. just like shape in it a little right. bit and it will be very hard to detect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This, is, um, this one was really funny. He goes, I <sighs> feel like I'm Scott Peterson. And 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 Schwartz is like, didn't that guy kill his wife? He's like, allegedly. <laughs> oh my God. It was, and this is where I'm like, this stuff is good. Like I, I am not bored at all. I feel like they are, because there's such deep history and friendships yeah. and all of it that it just keeps you, going with it you right. know versus watching the buying beverly hills where there's the sisters but they're not people we know mm-hmm. and then all these extra people that we don't know yet it right. just doesn't like suck you in like a vanderpump when you really know these characters and you've watched for so long 100 but yeah. um that was really funny um oh tracy morgan said that he gained 40 pounds doing the weight loss drug ozempic okay do you know what's really tra- is that a joke though i've seen this everywhere is he like joking i don't know okay because i'm so candidly i am on semaglutide which okay. is on which is the that's the ingredient in ozempic yes. so basically it's like generic ozempic i have been on it since february 2023 with like a 3 to 4 month break in the fall um i'm back on it and I'm doing okay, but I, I'm not losing weight as quickly as I was in the beginning. And I don't know if that's just like how Ozempic goes. I mean, you don't, you're not a, you're a slim looking guy. So what are you hoping to do? Just lose like six pounds? So I got really fluffy during the pandemic. Okay. And so I've, I've lost like about like 25 ish oh, okay. pounds. So like a, a good chunk of weight off. So I, uh, my goal is to lose maybe like 10 to 15 more, but I'm just like not losing. And then like some check-ins, like, like when I weigh myself, I'm actually like heavier. And so when I saw that Tracy Morgan like ate out ate Ozempic, I'm wondering like, am I doing the same thing? Am I out eating Ozempic? Oh, my my friend went on it. I have to check in with her, but it, she was losing, but very slowly, mm. very very slowly. And I'm yeah. like, well, maybe that's kind of good. But there's another thing that's happening. Girls are getting pregnant. I saw that. Like e- they're calling them Ozempic babies, and it's like helping. So them? they're. Okay, so they're on Ozempic. Yeah. And, okay, there's this thing. This is what it reminds me of. It's, they, so they're saying that it is possible that it's fucking with birth control pills. It's like canceling each other out. Oh. So they go on Ozempic, and they're on birth control, and they're getting pregnant. And they're not trying to get pregnant, They don't, or they don't want to get pregnant, or they're some of them are not on birth control, and they thought... And their doctor said, you'll never get pregnant again. This girl goes, after my second C-section, I was like in my late 30s. I'm like, I'm done or whatever. And 
so she just got pregnant. But the Ozempic babies are coming out to be fine. They're they're not like and nothing's <laughs> wrong with them. Um, they order less at a restaurant. So I don't know. <laughs> you don't have to buy as much formula. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I thought there was like I remember there was a girl in high school who got pregnant right after high school, and she she told us do not do. She got pregnant because she was on antibiotics for something, and it canceled out whatever birth control she was on. Oh, wow. This was a long time ago. But I remember after that, the few times I went on antibiotics, if I was on birth control, I would always ask, like, is this something I need to be careful of? Yeah. So I think it could be like that. They said it's not necessarily – I don't know if – you know, it's not – they, they can't say it's hurting or helping, but that could be a, a positive or a negative, obviously, right. of Ozempic. If you want, if you're depends on if how you, you look at it. Yeah, you're pregnant and it wasn't working, and now you're, and then the other thing, you finally get skinny, and right. now you're pregnant. <laughs> I know. Yeah, there's so much. There's so much going on. That's a that's really interesting. But wow. yeah, it's a really interesting Ozempic thing. Babies. But it doesn't it sounds seem so to be bad. Have you seen this whole J Lo trend on TikTok? It's fucking hilarious. I. I love it. I, it's so it's so funny. She's J- obsessed with the block. J Lo, I okay. So I watch little bits. Okay, I'm very confused by the J Lo movies. There's two movies. One is just a bunch of music videos together, where she's like Rosie the Riveter, but in the future, <laughs> and then yeah. dancing around with like a, like where she walks like a like she's got a cane, it's and then like, it's an umbrella. Right. And I mean, the clips I've seen are pretty. I only watched a little, and I couldn't take it. Then she has another one. That's just her being her documentary, her bet on blonde, whatever, right. being raw and how hard her life is, being that she is this incredible entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. And yep. one clip <laughs> I saw, I the, the, the acting was horrific. She's acting like it's real. And she's like. Which clip? <laughs> okay. So she has no makeup on. And she's rubbing her eyes so much. She's so tired. She's rubbing her eyes so much. <laughs> and she's like, I miss Ben. Like, yeah, I should have been at the movie premiere. And she's rubbing her eyes. And she's like, I mean, sometimes I just can't do it all. And and no tears are coming. And she's rubbing, like, almost to the point where I'm like, wait a minute. You are someone who, you know, has this glowing skin. You have a J-Lo skin thing. Anyone would, anyone like our age woman would be like stop rubbing the wrinkles around your eyes what the fuck are you doing <laughs> right. like you know and you're like and so there's that then there's the one that we also saw where she goes i love taking out my hair and it just goes to show you that her she doesn't have great hair the amount of hair products she's sold and uh, you know so anytime you see her hair looking amazing it's none of it is hers so she has very short messy hair and she rubs her and she goes and it's like this hair is I like wearing my hair crazy like that. It's a crazy, crazy girl. 16, <laughs> running around the streets of the Bronx, going to the bodego. Going to... And so I started, I went down a rabbit hole, and this girl pops up, and she goes, enough with you running the streets of the bodego. You went to my same all-girl Catholic high school. <laughs> Your mom taught at this school. Like, you didn't have this like, and I think it's so funny because I've talked about it. How I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sick of like stars, their flex being like, I was a little bit poor at one time. Like, just mm. shut up. Like, I'm yeah. always like, that's why I always joke about like, I come from the south side of Ventura Boulevard, <laughs> in in the mean streets of the of Woodland Hills. Yeah. Sometimes I'd see one, even two coyotes <laughs> as I walked home from school. Like. We're all fine. It, like, yeah. we all lived a fine life. She lived a fine life. It feels like she's possibly misrepresenting her Bronx yes. experience. Yeah. Everyone's so like, enough with the Bronx stuff. You don't claim the Bronx. And then, then people would take it when they're like, what's your favorite thing to get at the bodega? Oh. And the way she ordered it, she's like, oh, like a ham and cheese sandwich. She's like, And someone's like, that's not the way you would say it. Like, if you really oh. lived in the bodega, like, you would say a ham that, or you'd say something. Yeah, but and, not that way. And they're like, she's, you know... A, Whatever. It's just, I always wonder, does she see this? I She's got to. I feel like J-Lo is someone who is like checking up on herself on social media at all times. I feel like she definitely, I feel like she's definitely seen it. I always think, I think it's crazy. And I've said this before, like someone with her enormous success and everything. What I think is the problem is that she won't let it go. Like, why are you doing everything that a 25 year old influencer mm. is doing? Sunday morning vibes. I'm like, I'm like doing all like, just want to check in with you guys. Like, 
I I don't know. Like, I'm like, you should be above all this shit. And I feel like she says no, doesn't say no to anything. Yeah. She'll do like a partnership with like a legging company that's not even her own. Right. What are you doing? I'm, I guess she just likes a check. I don't know. All checks are good checks for JLo, I she guess. Had to, I she had to get rid of a bunch of shows. Oh, I saw that. That makes me see. And that makes me sad, too, because I went to her like 50th birthday tour thing i think it was like 2019 or something and it was like seriously one of the best shows i've ever been to well i heard that her tickets were seven dollars <laughs> oh well i mean I, well that's the I thing that doesn't get involved. <laughs> yeah, no, literally maybe they're one dollar i don't know yeah. name them name them <laughs> I, name all the cities that she canceled name them i i think it was like like a good chunk of cities that she had to yeah. like go of i feel uh, but i also feel Listen, like it's hard out there if it you, is hard you're, if you're at some big arenas and st- sometimes you're just like you know, it, you gotta be you gotta be careful, even a big star, because people don't have the money to go to these shows. Yeah, you know, and it's right, like, and like ticket uh, ticket prices are like so expensive now. So the her people yeah. in the Bronx, who she's trying to connect with recently, probably don't want to spend seven hundred dollars on a ticket. No, but if you want to see comedy, go to heathermcdonald.net and only buy your ticket from heathermcdonald.net. That's the other thing. People Google without going to the artist, whether you're a comedian uh, or whatever, going to the exact website first. Mm. Because if they buy the tickets secondary, I don't know. I don't. But these are big arenas and stuff, so that's a whole other thing. Yeah. Poor thing. Um, so this is Summer House, which I didn't watch last season, but I cannot take my eyes off of it because it's about this couple that were platonic friends, and then they fell in love over the seasons. He got sober, but he does pot. She still drinks. <laughs> It's so captivating. Does pot is yeah. so old lady, but he smokes weed or whatever. <laughs> and they get engaged, and they absolutely have the worst relationship ever. <laughs> like known to man. And then she says, Paige, or someone's asking her, um, her friends are asking her, well, like, ha-, yeah, they're like, oh, my gosh, I think Carl's going to love you in that. And she's like, and uh, I, it felt really like, no, he's not. And then <laughs> she's like, how often do you have sex? And she goes, um... Um, not a lot, like, but not, you know, once every two or three weeks. But when we do, it's amazing. Yes. And Paige is like, okay, first of all, everybody that's in a relationship lies about how much sex they have. Because mm-hmm. everybody probably, unless you're like one of those people where like your husband is just all over you all the time. And then that's, your, then that's annoying, yeah. you know? Yeah. Most people, they're like... I don't know how honest everyone's going to really be. Okay. Right. So so they're like, clearly they're not having any, I don't, I bet it could even be like four months ago when she said this. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. They have broken up in real life. We're watching the demise Thank of it. Thank God. She's absolutely, she's blaming him for <laughs> drinking while she's drinking rosé all day long and they're showing her drink it all the time. And then she's like, are you on something? You seem like cocaine Carl right now. And he's like, what? I'm totally not. And then there's, some of the people are like, look, I just don't think you should get married. And so thank God they're not getting married. He has asked for the ring back. Yes. And he was on Watch What Happens Live and he's like, well, the state of New York says it's, it is mine. And people were in the comments were like, that's okay that like the state of New York says it's yours because you guys didn't get married. And therefore it was like a promise, meaning like. I mean, there's one way to be like, this is a gift. And then because it's an engagement ring, it's like part of a contract that mm. would become a legal contract. Right. So the ring was part of the legal contract that never was consummated. So that is why he can ask for that back. OK, so he got the but ring the and class, she got the apartment. Class wise, though, like, yeah, but yeah. maybe that's why. And listen, we know these people don't make a lot of money. And now the other thing on her end, he was sound did like no ambition at all. Did you see that part? I did. And I was kind of like, I, she was kind of like dogging him. She was like, he tried to do this like sober Ted talk thing and wanted to like do speaking engagements. And then he wanted to do this and wanted to do that. And like, none of it happened. And well, I, I don't just, think she was dogging him at all. You he's, don't. he's 40 years old. He's been on a reality oh, okay. show for like eight years. <laughs> Nothing wrong with 40. I'm saying like, he's not a young kid. It's not like yeah. he's 21 and you're being like a dick to your son. He's 40 years old. He's had all these opportunities. He gave up his job at Loverboy or whatever happened yeah. with that, the alcohol company with his friend. And he and she's like, you got to what are you going to do? Like, are we going to have kids? And like, 
are we going to bring our kid to the summer house for the next 10 years to survive? Like, what is your plan? And I think he was, and so she's like, but you're not following through. Like, you bought the podcast equipment and you're not doing a podcast. You said you're going to do TED Talks, but you didn't get an agent to hire you to do TED Talks. Now, the worst idea on earth, besides um, something about her sandwich shop, <sighs> is a sober sports bar. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You have a the point. The only yes, reason you're yes, going to make yes. money is because people are going to get drunk and buy alcohol. Right. You're not going to make a lot of money. No like guy selling who's soda sober pop at the, yeah. is like, I would like to go to a bar and get a real fun mocktail <laughs> and fight for the Chiefs. Like, what the? No, that's an awful idea. Right. And then everything that goes into it. So she's got to be like, no. I'm not going to stand by while you come up with an awful idea in the hardest business in America, the restaurant business. Yeah. No and no. Right. No, I I get that. That was not the best idea. I think just from watching the show, though, Carl feels like none of his ideas are supported. And he, I think he said, like, on Watch What Happens, I like now that he's no longer in the relationship, like he finally has like the focus, drive and determination and no no distractions. And he's you know, able to sort of like make a few steps towards achieving some of these goals. Yeah. So I think it's, I don't know. I, I feel like it's probably tough for him to sort of like figure out what he wants to do with himself and his like post sober life with like Lindsay Hubbard. She's such a menace to him. I think, I think they bring out the worst in each other. They're I think awful. I never thought the relationship was real to start. Oh, okay. But obviously it was, I mean, I really thought it was an act the whole time. Yeah. I thought like maybe he, wasn't even into females. That's oh. just my opinion as someone okay. who watched. I then I thought it was fake. Like they did this weird, like where she's wearing like a nurse outfit, and I felt like it was very oh, fake. That, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Like a sexy nurse. Yeah. I, I thought it was fake. No, I I do think it was real. I do think they mm. got engaged and fell in love. But thank God they're not getting married. Yeah, seriously. Um, Candace has announced from Potomac yeah. that she is not coming back, and I think um. Hopefully, I think it's probably the right move for her. Why not? Yeah, I think that she is someone who has really worked hard to establish a career outside of the Housewives with like her music and stuff. And I think that people are starting to take her a little bit more seriously in that space. So, but are I, people going to be going to her shows like they will Luann's? I don't think so. I think if she, like, if we're talking about like the Housewives fandom, no. But no. I think that if she like continues to work hard to build a fan base outside of Housewives and like yeah. a, a real music fan base, yeah, then, I think she has yeah, potential. Yeah, she could totally sing. Yeah. Yeah, I think then so. Then they said Robin, according to a uh, big wig, Hello Drama posted this from Jasmine Brand, the Jasmine Brand, that she is leaving. So I don't know if this is true. This, but I wouldn't yeah. be surprised. I feel like the Jasmine brand when it comes to Potomac and Atlanta tea, they're typically correct. So I feel like this is probably true. It's just so interesting to me because like Candace and Robin were adversaries this season. So I, I, I'm surprised that both of them are leaving. I'm also wondering where this is going to leave Giselle. Where and is this going to leave Potomac in general? Because the biggest news is Karen Huger I got a, a, a DUI over the weekend. She hit a – she swerved off the road – Totaled her 2017 Maserati. She didn't want to take a, a breathalyzer there, which is her right to say no to. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're going to get out of the DUI, but there's a better way to defend a DUI without a breathalyzer evidence. I see. And I think she knew that. Did you see her statement? So her statement <laughs> was, I was with my friend and being that Mother's Day is here and I lost my mother. I'm like, okay. It's March. You're 60 years old and your parents passed. Yeah. Most 60 year olds don't have their parents on this earth anymore. It's very sad. I've lost my, both my parents. I've never used it as like a crutch for anything. I always felt like, oh my gosh, you know, I had my parents up until 10 years ago. That's a long run. They saw my kids. Like, I'm very grateful mm -hmm. for that. Not putting that you can't be sad and whatever. But like she brings that up that I lost my mother and um, and Mother's Day is around the corner. Mother's Day is not till May 11th or something. Yeah, we, we have and some we're time. March. Yeah. So it wasn't like tomorrow or today was Mother's Day. And so I was crying and I was emotional. And so no one should drive when they're emotional. I know. She would like didn't. So she never. So she's absolutely not copying to it because I think she is going to try yeah. and fight it. And it might her, be a guess, low enough, um, you know blood or whatever it is that they that they took or they took the breathalyzer at the department mm -hmm. so sometimes people think if they get to the police department 
Maybe they'll sober up in the mm. 15 minutes before that. But whatever, they could do it. So whatever, I don't know if that has been released yet. But if there's a chance that she can um, fight it and prove that she wasn't intoxicated, then I think that's what she's going for. Yeah. But A lesson to all, do not drive all your emotional. No. And then, <laughs> and then Mia from Potomac, basically what I gathered, because I really didn't watch it this season. I think a lot of people didn't. I've heard it was sort of a boring season. Mia was a stripper who met an older guy, Gordon, and they got married and had two kids. And then they owned a bunch of joint chiropractic places. And then his brother fucked him over. And then they went from a fancy house to an apartment. And then she started dating someone. But then the, what is this new information that she had a whole other boyfriend while she was engaged before marrying Gordon? Yeah. So on the se- the season finale of Potomac, and yeah, it was kind of a sleepy season, but it's been a great season for Mia and like the yeah. whole finale was like about her in this drama which was honestly very so maybe compelling. maybe I have to go back and watch it now. You Just watch the finale. Okay. The finale right. is great. It's okay. like literally like a documentary special the last 20 minutes about them two and it's, okay. it's very interesting. It. So she is currently dating this guy named Inc who is a radio DJ. I guess he has some show that's like syndicated in many cities and she's very proud of that for him. Okay. And they were high school sweethearts and so they've always just kind of been like connected and tethered and uh, according to Gordon her like now estranged husband on the season finale, he was like basically spilling all the tea that she's been with Inc. this entire time, even before they got married, and that Mia told him throughout their marriage, like, this is my soulmate, and anytime we're having issues, that's why I always go back to him. And now there's even like questions surrounding the paternity of her second oldest son. Inc. thinks it's his, and this is all going to be unpacked at the reunion. I think Gordon also might think that it's Inc.'s. It's, like, honestly so crazy, but Danny and I just interviewed Mia, and she seems so happy with Inc. currently, and she also said that they have all gotten to a place where they all go out to dinner with each other, with the kids, so... So now Gordon is not still angry at this time. Oh, according to Mia. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I am going to watch it, and, and so that is good. Um, Kelsey and, and Taylor are still together, but I want to wrap it up because we were gone a, a minute. You guys, virtual, re, re, how do you say it? Reality. Reality, Get yes. It? yes. So it's <laughs> T-E-A at the end of reality. And um, you guys do interview a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You obviously are through, it's through page six, right? It's page yep. six affiliated. Mm-hmm. And I always see you guys, and I'm glad that you came on. Yes, thank and you. And we did not talk shit about Danny, which is what I, the whole plan was to. <laughs> yes. Just kidding. Um, tell anybody else where they can follow you and everything. Uh, yeah, so personally, you can follow me at Evan Real on Instagram. And then Virtual Reality, we drop episodes every Thursday. And then typically, we'll do like bonus episodes or extended full interviews on like Fridays or Mondays. It just kind of depends on how the week goes. And we do live shows. We have some coming up. Uh, this year, I think we have one in May in New York City. So we'll have more information to share about that. Awesome. Soon. But thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, this was so fun. We could go on another three hours, yeah. but you know, we can't. <laughs> Bye. Bye.